In copper processing, uh, typically there are two modes for creating copper metal. In hydrometallurgy, we recover copper by use of water-based chemistry. In pyrometallurgy, we recover copper by means of heat. A rock is a composite of a lot of minerals, say chalcopyrite or bornite. Malachite and cuprite may also be the copper ore contained in the rock. The rest of the rock that does not contain copper ore is called gang. At Marenzi, yes, they, they engage in hydrometallurgical processing. They also do uh, crushing, grinding, flotation of sulfide minerals to make copper concentrates. Hydrometallurgy is mostly used on copper oxides because they are easily solubilized in acids. Copper ore is then wetted with dilute sulfuric acid in an agglomerator just before being heaped. Then they'll use a process of heap leaching where weak sulfuric acid is sprinkled on the material and the copper oxide is released. The dissolved copper is recovered in a lined impermeable pond and sent to solvent extraction or SX. And then it's concentrated and purified with solvent extraction. Uh, that's the primary process hydrometallurgically for the last 40 years. then the copper metal solutions are reduced using what we call electrowinning, where we use electrical energy to reduce the copper to copper metal. That started first late in the late 1960s, early 70s, uh, at a place called Rancher's Bluebird in the United States, so it's a recent event. pound sheets of Electro-1 copper are popped off of the cathode and stacked into bundles. The cathode bundles are then loaded in the rail cars and shipped to factories for transformation into final copper products. Copper sulfides require pyrometallurgical smelting since they are not as readily soluble as copper oxide. So we go through crushing and grinding, crushing in a sag mill and grinding in a ball mill in order to liberate the copper minerals away from the waste minerals or the gang so they're no longer connected. And then the sulfide minerals are selectively concentrated by a process called froth flotation. we add chemicals to a water system. And what happens is uh, materials within the Earth's crust, uh, sulfides or the like, are either hydrophilic or hydrophobic. That is, they're water-loving, hydrophilic, or water-repelling or hating, hydrophobic. So by adding um, what we call collectors, like uh, xanthates or diethylphosphates, you can get a monolayer coating on the sulfide mineral that will make it hydrophobic 
and correspondingly aerophilic, so it likes air. So as we change the surface chemistry of the particle, it will be repelled by water and attach to uh, an air bubble that you put in the solution. There are several stages of froth flotation. At each stage, the solids become more purified. After flotation concentrates the copper ore, the water must be removed. This is done in a tank called a thickener. Thickened solids are then filtered. At the end of filtration, the copper concentrates have about an 8% water content. The filtered copper concentrate is then piled and loaded onto train cars. These are then shipped to a smelter where so-called pyrometallurgical techniques, that is no water and a lot of heat, are used to smelt them, converting and then final refining to form uh, copper metal. And that's a very ancient and historic method of copper production.